Hello and welcome. I'm Jeff Zarnett, and this is SE350, a course at the University of Waterloo. This course is about operating systems. The undergraduate calendar description is an introduction to the fundamentals of operating system function and implementation. Topics include concurrency, synchronization, processes, threads, scheduling, memory management, file systems, device management, and security. The course has a few prerequisites, uh, CS240 or 246 or 247, uh, and ECE222. It is intended for software engineering students at the University of Waterloo. Um, we are not going to be taking the time to go over uh, C as a programming language. There's an expectation that you have some familiarity with that uh, as a topic, uh, because it turns out to be important uh, in how we're going to conduct the course and the examples in the things that we're going to do. Uh, and for the labs. It does assume uh, that you have enough uh, programming background as well. Uh, if you don't feel confident in your programming skills, um, this is a good time as any to get caught up and there are some good instructional uh, videos and websites and practice exercises out there in C. The course uses Learn as well as Piazza for a discussion forum and for the notes and the slides you can take a look at GitHub uh, and you've of course already found your way to the lectures that are here on YouTube uh, and the course syllabus links a playlist. This is not intended as an entirely online course but it seems to me anyway a wise idea that we actually have uh, video lectures available. Um, if the past couple of terms provide any experience it is people are likely to miss lectures for various reasons, illness or otherwise, uh, and having some resources available uh, in video format is helpful because well what did I miss? Well you can just check out the videos. If you are just watching the lecture videos then you should expect to watch about two and a half lecture hours per week to keep pace. About the course textbook. Truth be told, the course notes should be pretty much everything that you need for this course, um, and they're primarily based on three of the books that I've found to be useful about operating systems. Each of them has a different take on things, and they all have their strengths and weaknesses, and I read them so you don't have to. Um, and they are Operating Systems uh, Concepts, 9th edition by Silberschatz and Galvin. Uh, they are Operating Systems Internals and Design Principles, 9th edition uh, by William Stallings, uh, and then Modern Operating Systems, 3rd edition, by Tannenbaum. Do you need a textbook? Should you buy one? Personal decision. You decide how much use you can get out of it, um, but generally I don't think it's strictly necessary. They make a good secondary reference. They contain more information, more detail about a lot of things that are covered in the course, uh, but there won't be any assignments or homework or what have you that is based on using those and using only those. Um, I'll also talk about the intended learning outcomes, ILOs. Um, at the end of the course, students will be able to apply basic concurrency and synchronization concepts in a user program and understand how the operating system implements them. Use, design, analyze the essential elements of an operating system, uh, and then design, implement, and debug limited operating system functionality in the lab projects. Uh, the course schedule is uh, as you would find it in your schedule of classes and the grading scheme of the course, at least uh, in the term in which I'm recording this, uh, involves a midterm of final and labs. Um, on the subject of labs, that's definitely worth talking about, right? Um, this is important stuff. Um, the labs are a very important part of actually completing the course, um, and it involves uh, designing, implementing, and testing some operating system stuff on uh, an embedded hardware board. Um, groups should have four and exactly four members, not five, uh, and if you want to have three, um, you do need you know, some strong justification for that. Um, and uh, once you formed your group, um, it is possible, although difficult, to split your group. Um, you do have to give notice and it has to be in writing and only one group split up is allowed, so ideally don't do that. Please choose wisely because um, there are marks associated with signing up in your group and there's a penalty um, associated with um, splitting your group. With that said, um, for the lab projects, it is difficult, right? Um, it is something I want to encourage you very strongly to start as early as possible, forming your group um, as early as possible, but also getting started on the lab project. Um, why is that important? For one thing, estimation is hard. Um, it is not easy to get a good estimate of how long something is going to take, and even given a good estimate to begin with, things can easily go off the rails because debugging something that seemed like it would be easy can take you know, 10x the original implementation time. 
Um, programmers are eternal optimists, right? If you ask people how long it'll take, it'll be finished in two weeks or two days or two hours, but real life is sometimes worse than that. Um, and it is also going to take some work to efficiently partition the project, right? Um, when we divide the work up between different people, um, hopefully we get more work done, but there is uh, an increase in the level of communication that's necessary. Uh, and at some point, the communication overhead outweighs the benefit of splitting things up. So it is important to be mindful about how you are going to partition the project. Right, um, And you could choose a couple of different approaches. Um, Professor uh, Zahedi, who uh, teaches this course uh, in some other terms, um, has suggested one possibility is functional. So one person implements functionality A, another person implements functionality B, and so on. Um, but that requires a good API design to make sure that you are um, interacting in a good way and recognizing that if you make changes, um, that you are um, respecting the work that other people have done. Um, another thing has to do with um, dividing it up by tasks. So splitting up, say, design and implementation and testing. That can be very difficult to find the right balance, um, but it does allow people to sort of focus on what they're good at. Um, and debugging is hard, right? Testing and evaluating it is, is difficult, but lots of teams work like this. Okay, um, so with, with that said, right, um, you're going to have to think about communication very seriously when it is you know, a group of four. Um, more people means more communication. Uh, miscommunication is common, so it's better to over communicate as opposed to under communicate. Uh, and decisions uh, are difficult. Right. Um, if you let everybody decide things individually, that's very fast, but there is a potential that we don't agree on things and we only figure that out late in the game. Um, group decisions take time. Um, centralized decisions require someone who has sort of a, a big um, overview uh, of the system as a whole and is not too caught up in the details, but also uh, is not um, overly committed to code that has already been written. All right. Um, so choosing someone to take the role of being the architect could be good, um, but they you know, have to have good people skills and they have to be willing to make difficult decisions and they have to have the respect of people in the group to make that work. Um, with that said, um, you are at this point, I'm sure, quite familiar with all the different ways that we can communicate um, in, in the real world, whether you're going to meet up in person um, or you're going to um, do this via Teams or some other communication mechanism. That's fine. But when you're forming your group, and I talk about this with capstone groups who want me to be their consultants uh, as well, um, we have to be very thoughtful about work styles. Um, are you a morning person? Are you a last minute person? Um, are you a, uh, a person who really wants to get ahead of the game? Talk about those things in advance. Right? You should um, have an understanding. Similarly, um, you should also talk with people about like how far do you want to take this? Um, are you planning to do extra things? Um, do you care a huge amount about like, getting every tiny detail correct? Or are you fine with close enough is good enough? And you know, it's okay if we just you know, pass. You need to talk about those things as a group because there is going to be some amount of friction as the term goes on because it is a meaningful project. Uh, and if you have those discussions you know, up front, you'll understand what everyone's expectations are and how to make all of that work. Right. With that said, um, and Professor Zahedi uh, is, is pretty direct about this uh, in his recommendation, and um, I'm, I'm glad he said it because I not necessarily would have thought of it, um, which is remember to you know, treat people well. All right, people will make mistakes, they will miss meetings, they will miss a deadline, the, the code that they deliver will have bugs, whatever it is, you need to live with it, you need to adapt, um, and you know, just focus on solving the problem, not on figuring out who's at fault or who needs to do what. Um, we all make mistakes, we all get things wrong, we all um, can do more or less uh, to address that. Um, it is obviously better to you know, anticipate problems than to clean up afterwards. So it's easier to change something when it's just you know, a paragraph than when it's you know, several pages of code, um, but that's fine. It's also recommended to create some documentation. Documentation makes it clear why things have been decided the way they are um, and makes it clear um, what is already done or what decisions uh, need to be taken still. Um, and it also helps with communication, right? Um, you do want to choose 
carefully what you're going to document. If you have too little documentation, nobody knows what's going on. If you have too much documentation, nobody's going to read it because a giant wall of text crits you for 10,000 damage. With that said, um, you, know, you want to use appropriate tools for this. Um, you want to use uh, version control software and uh, use the university GitLab um, to allow people to work on things concurrently. Um, you should write tests um, and um, ideally you should document um, any decisions or um, any conversations that you have in which something important um, was, was noticed or discovered such that you don't forget it. Um, it's also worth your while, of course, to test things uh, as much as you can. Um, you want to be testing along the way as you implement different functionality. It's not great um, if you are trying to you know, test it all uh, on the due date um, because yeah, you won't, you won't have a good time uh, on that basis. Um, it's also sort of um, worth discussing the collaboration policy that's in the syllabus. I really encourage you to um, take a look at it. Um, but some important notes is you, know, you are supposed to do this you know, as your team uh, and it is supposed to be your team's work. It doesn't mean you can't uh, discuss it um, with another group. Um, it doesn't mean you can't ask someone to help you debug, but it does mean no sharing code, no open sourcing your code, don't copy um, you know, uh, groups test cases, anything like that. Uh, plagiarism is something that we take seriously in this course. Um, and finally, um, two more notes. You can certainly ask for help from you know, the teaching team. Uh, we can have the Piazza Forum where you can ask questions and we'll endeavor to answer them. But our goal in answering them is to help you to find the way to the answer, to help you to debug the problem, not to tell you the answer. Right. And, and on that note, you know, when, when there's a lab deliverable, um, we can't... Um, we can't just say, oh, here's the solution to this part that you can build on. It's your responsibility to um, fix anything that needs fixing uh, if you plan to build on it for a, a later component of the, uh, of the lab. So don't forget, you need to um, find your group. You need to sign up uh, your group as quickly as possible. Um, and this makes, uh, this makes your life easier. You don't want to be scrambling to find group members towards the end. Okay, lab digression over. Um, I also just want to tell you briefly before we go on a little bit about myself. Um, so I uh, graduated from computer engineering at Waterloo under a previous curriculum um, and um, I went on to get my master's degree, my PNG license, and at this point it's been almost 10 full years of teaching uh, at UW and I've taught a lot of other courses, um, all of which are software with the exception of the law and ethics course. One of these things is not like the others. Uh, and certainly that has been uh, an interesting experience uh, and uh, it's you know, well, well appreciated, I think, um, that um, some courses are not like others and I recognize that you know, an SE course is not quite like an ECE course. Um, so I will be keeping that in mind as we go along. Uh, I've also recently, uh, well, recently as in a year ago, uh, become one of the computer engineering academic advisors. Um, that doesn't help SE students too much, um, although I can give some general advice to that. Um, and if for some reason um, you didn't, uh, didn't know uh, about your SE advisors, uh, I would certainly be happy to refer you to the correct person uh, in that regard. Um, in addition to the teaching, I also do some consulting work uh, in industry, so I keep pretty busy. Uh, I therefore really prefer asynchronous communication. Um, asking your question on Piazza or by email uh, works best. Um, alternatively, if it's important, we can try to schedule something in Zoom uh, to make it work, uh, not Zoom, uh, Teams to make it work. Um, I guess Zoom would be okay also. In any case, um, that's pretty much it for the introduction. This has uh, already gotten a, a little bit long-winded. Um, so we'll pick up again in the next topic where we'll actually talk about what is an operating system and you know, how does it work uh, and why do we care about this subject? <laughs>